Let me show these suckers how to ball out here. Oh, man. Let me get this together here. Oh, layup. Oh, shot. Oh, three. Three. Oh, it's like Brick City out here. Mid-range. Oh, my goodness. I can't buy a bucket out here. I missed the whole damn basket. Oh, my goodness. What's going on, man? My game is looking trash. Right. Oh, here we go. Black Power Media shirt. Now we cooking. Now we cooking. Tree. Tree. I'm taking on tree of y'all with these right here. Between the legs. Oh, my goodness. Behind the back. Layup. Oh, did he just do a reverse? He is in beast mode out here. I ain't got to look. It's falling. Oh, my goodness. This guy is going. Three, two, one. Kobe. Nice. Black Power Media, baby. Nice. Empower yourself. Go get me some of that Black Power Media again. Right here, blackpowermedia.org. Yep. I mix what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like, what I like. Yes, yes, yes. What's up, world? Back again. I mix what I like right here at Black Power Media. Professors in Tume Gant and Jared Ball back in the building. What's up, Professor Gant? What's good, my man? Peace. Doing all right, man. Can y'all hear me okay? You can hear me good? Sounds good. Good. Yeah, Sounds I'm okay. Good. Uh, uh, well, on break, I'm actually on, uh, I'm entering sabbatical, actually, for the semester, which is good. Very happy, but I'm also one month into a newborn, so you know my 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 rest. <laughs> Congratulations! Thank you. Nice. No, straight up and down, it's it's a beautiful thing, you know. But <laughs> that rest, I know you know you you've you've done it twice. So, <laughs> listen, it is a beautiful thing, but it's it doesn't come without a price. I mean, it's, it's right. some work. That's what I've learned. It's some sacrifice. I yeah that's what i've learned it's like it's one of those things thank you i truly appreciate it um yeah it's a thing that i've realized that like you can hold those two spaces at once you could be like this is a beautiful thing and yeah woo i'm tired yes it's funny just yesterday i was the 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 pickup drop-off thing was a struggle wow and and my youngest got in the car and i was i was a little bit stressed and i started to say you know and i said i said man and then i looked at her and i caught myself and i said i, I love you guys and she said yeah but that sounded like it came with a little something and i said all right i i said you know it's, it's <laughs> yeah i love yeah. you but there's times that it's a little stressful loving yeah. you you know doing for you is a little so but but of course it's all worth it it's all yeah it's, but it, it's a natural to have a reaction. You know, I'm sitting there changing a diaper and my girl is just like, I'm not going to stop crying. And you can't. <laughs> and you're going to have that reaction. You know, it's it's just what it is. So it's like I, I've, I've been, been really like learning how to like embrace those two spaces and like or not even just two spaces, like multiple spaces with it and just be cool with it. So but yeah, yeah, it's been it is what it is. But, you know. But yeah, you know, very, 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 very happy. Uh, so folks, just FYI, there's likely to be spoilers. I had initially, so so initially, I, my initial plan was to be on a bit of a, a BPM break this month, more or less. And, but, but uh, I had a little bit of time the family was a traveling and I went, you know, on my own just to go see this movie, just to take myself out to a movie. Mm -hmm. And I had a great time mm -hmm. now. So, so a couple things, one, just to be fair. And if we want to, we can get to the full story. It was a wild night. It was my version of Curb Your Enthusiasm uh i kind of uh, need to know this because you can't you yeah. can't just throw that out there and then and then pull it back i'm gonna i want to maybe save that because it was you. that's kind of a personal thing i don't know Got it was you. a little okay. wild it was okay. a little it was but part of it was but part of my version of it i will share this part was that i i had i i had i missed i i think i missed two of the three endings so i'm saying this to say I only saw the first ending, and there are, I think, three. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, there will be spoilers. I had intended initially I was going to try to get my man Dr. Burroughs to come through, but he's not in a hurry to see the film. It's mm-hmm. not playing, and in, in, he's in Newark. He was like, it's nowhere near Newark. Yeah, you got to go to the city for that one. Right, right, right. And uh, uh, thankfully, being somewhat close to D.C., D.C. gets a lot of those kinds of movies, at least, well, decreasingly so. But Yeah. So, uh, uh, but I intended to wait, and I had asked people to go see the film. I said it's a must-see film, and I had asked everybody to go check it out. And uh, I was going to wait, but then you hit me up. We were talking about when we were going to do our next, you know, you were like my man. (laughs) This is not must see. And you sent me a couple articles, which I did read. Right. And then I, and then I, and, and so I'm just trying to get everybody situated for, for the context here. Yeah. So then, so we scheduled this, here we are. Happy New Year. All of that good stuff to everybody. I don't know how long you're supposed to say that. Like the gotcha. first time you see somebody in the new year or whatever. And uh, so here we are. Yeah. So I said, wow, if somebody's going to check me on, on, you know, my Vernon philosophy might have been slipping. All of that is also all very possible. I said, it's got to be you. So here we go. Well, I mean, I'll say a couple things. I mean, uh I think I go with a a kind of new concept with it is like, you know, everyone's reaction is everyone's reaction to a piece or to a work. But I think even even myself, even, uh, you know, how I interrogate myself and how I react to certain things negatively or positively. But then what I always try to go back to is what the piece is and how it just was constructed and how it exists within the framework of many things, whether it's the Hollywood superstructure, whether it's the st- structure of black politics, black discourse, so forth and so on. Um, aesthetics um, and how aesthetic form dictates also how what the politics of a piece is. So I always go back to that. I mean, because I will also be honest i've been very aware of this film for a while because i'm actually a huge fan of the of the book it's based on erasure by percival everett which i is a writer that i've been gosh i i I first erasure was the first everett book that i read maybe 10 11 years ago i I feel like it could have been longer but i'm you know time i lose it but I'm a huge. I actually just finished reading another one of his books about six months ago called Trees, which 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 was really good. And um, so I was very aware of this movie, and I know a little bit about Cord Jefferson, the director. So I was a little gun shy, and but on the flip side, I've always been a huge fan of Jeffrey Wright as an actor. Politically, he's a bit weird. I don't know if you ever followed his Twitter. He he has some, yeah. He's he has no. some very. He's very he's he's very kind of black negro liberal, you know. I figured. Yeah, he's not it's not and it's you know, it is what it is, you know. He, he it, it doesn't take away from his acting. I think it's another takes away from his acting choices, but we'll 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 get into that. Uh or maybe we won't. But like I was but then I see Jeffrey in a piece, I get interested. I mean, look, I watched Boardwalk Empire, a show I really didn't I didn't enjoy just to see him in season 4. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I didn't really enjoy that show, but I knew no, he was coming no. down the pike, and I was yeah. like, "Oh, and he's great." But I, I like the way they did his character, either, especially in in the season where he comes back. It just the rendering was all bad. But you know, anyway. Well, I, I mean, digression. it was like if you're gonna do Du Bois Garvey, do it, and if you're do gonna it. do Du Bois Garvey as gangsters, I'm not mad at that. I don't have a problem getting a Me if neither. we're gonna take a stylized version of Du Bois and turn him into a little bit of a thug, and he's like. You know, I could talk about the color line and I could talk about, you know, we could, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know meeting with Arnold but, Rothstein and like washing yeah. his hands after he beats Arnold yeah, Rothstein. All I was of that. Like, okay. I was all in for all of it, but they just, they totally just neutered it, man. And I was like, nah, yeah. man. You know, yeah. so I was aware of the <laughs> film. So anyway, <laughs> it's true, you know. But anyway, American fiction, I was very aware of it. Um, but, you know, the newborn had came, so I wasn't really going to the movies, but a good friend of mine was like, 
I think you got to watch it. They mm. they were they weren't a, a big fan of it either. Mm. So they were able to, to 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 hit me with a screener of it. And literally right around the time I think you saw it, I also saw it. I watched it here at home. And I, I my response to it, yes, was not positive on a number of levels, um, right. which like I definitely I have like a bit of a framework of stuff here because the thing about it is like I feel like there's two two kind of two levels for me with this movie. Level mm -hmm. one is I could just talk about the movie, but I think the movie also exposed to some mythologies and some strange thought processes that is happening with the black Hollywood, black bourgeois, black liberal class mm -hmm. that exists and a, a kind of uh, ideolo ideological framework that they've actually either constructed or they're using to, to kind of push their agendas. And I believe this film is a result of that agenda and also mm. doing the agenda's work. I think, yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> so um, I feel like maybe yeah. like we should give him maybe a little bit of a synopsis of the movie first. Like we don't have to kill the whole movie. I could do it if you want. Oh, yeah, please. I, yeah. I'm definitely here. I'm going to defer to you on a lot of that. And yeah. I think and as jump you in were wherever, talking, please. and yeah, as you were talking and as I was sort of thinking and preparing a little bit for today, I think I think I might have been tripping a little bit. Because because there is a to, to, specific to that last point, there is a point that I, I made a note to bring up today that really. But go ahead. But let's do that. Yeah. Let, please give the synopsis. So uh, American fiction uh, directed by Cord Jefferson. I don't people don't I don't know. If people really know Cord. He's interesting because he has an interesting history. He was I found this out actually later. A homie put me on to this part that he was a, one of the editors for Gawker. Which I did not know up in about to about 2016. I think I oh, think that's it, interesting. It, it, is that when Gawker ended. I can't remember. I'm, I I don't I don't know, I don't know the timelines well. I'm not sure because they went down with the Hulk Hogan Peter right. Thiel thing. Yeah, right. right. That was so he might have been there to yeah. the end. But he, I know he transitioned into television. Where, where I got aware of him was he was one of the writers or the head writers or consultant or something. He was he was involved with the show Watchmen. The Watchmen television series that starred um, Regina King and uh, who was mm -hmm. Jeremy Irons and people like that. Um, uh, a, a piece that I actually have <laughs> I had many troubles with that piece myself. And I, I back when I was still on Twitter, I, I I wrote several things about that piece being very very suspect. In a, in a in a myriad of aspects I don't have to get into but I knew I knew of him because of that and then it's funny ironically one day I was just like searching and I saw that erasure got optioned um I don't know why I was looking for it maybe I was like curious myself and I saw it got optioned and I was like oh and then I saw it was being made but yeah so he's directed by Cord Jefferson this is his first film uh the film is about a uh, uh, a writer slash academic named uh, Theod Thelonious Monk Ellison. Uh, great name. I know it's, you know, and uh, he, uh, he he teaches at a, uh, a a white university that I don't think they, they name in California, right? Um, in California. And he is also a writer, but he writes novels that don't really hit. And he has a, he has a bit of a hang up when it comes to, the idea of blackness and what is too black, what is not black enough, so forth and so on, which I think is also, uh, it intertwines with his own complications about the, his, his own success. He, uh, one day, uh, I think at a conference or something, I can't remember exactly where it was. He, he uh, intercepts, uh, a, a book discussion of a book called We Lives in the Ghetto, uh, written by a woman. In now, I, I forgot what the, what 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 they what they gave her. It's funny they change her name in the novel uh, from the what, what her name was in the novel. I think her her name in the novel was like was like Juanita Mae Jenkins or something like that. 
And uh, the it name, was her name yeah. I forget what her name is. Well, the character is played by Issa Rae. Right. Um, and it's a it's a book about it's a ghetto it's a ghetto life book, and it becomes this, this rage. It's, it's 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 suddenly the new rage that everyone is like you know losing their mind of, and this becomes a a kind of um, negative energy for Ellison because you know he writes these books that are sophisticated and his don't hit and and then he Centaura also has golden Sorry. Centaura golden yeah. yeah and and you know interesting change uh i'm not exactly sure why but the change of of yeah Centaura golden and uh he in 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 seeing at this conference he also has to go back home to his family who he has a bit of a strained relationship with and he, his sister, played by Tracy Ellis Ross, is a doctor who's had a, like a bad marriage. Um, and uh, and his brother, played by Sterling K. Brown, is going through a, 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 a an awakening of his own sexuality, discovering that he's he's gay, and it, it it destroys like his parts of his life, including marriage, and also uh, I, I guess some of his career, like financially, so forth and so on. I think they, they kind of allude to. So he has a lot of these issues, you know, going with family. And then his sister, and then also his mother, uh, is beginning to develop uh, Alzheimer's. And it becomes, you know, this, this huge level of emotional stress for, for Ellison. So this all kind of culminates after his sister dies in uh which, which I guess is a heart attack. They don't they 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 don't really say what she dies of. At least I I missed it. And they and don't also, clarify that in the book either. Well, the book she dies in a completely different way, which oh, okay, I what, which okay, I'm going okay. to get to. Okay, my bad, which, my bad. Okay, yeah, okay, my bad, which like okay. it's funny when I when I was watching the movie, I was like, that's not how she dies. I couldn't remember, mm. and I had to like go back, and I went, oh, that's right, which is something very interesting. Um, and. In that kind of stress, he decides, you know, and and this we lives in the ghetto is still kind of uh, like a like a specter laying on the back of his head. He's like, you know what, you know what, I'm I'm gonna get my get back. So he decides to write a, a satirical novel called My Pathology, uh, which is which he totally intends to be satire and uh, spelled and, like, P A F. Yeah, patha. Follow G, you know, written by a guy named Stag R. Lee. That's that 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 is his his um his alias that he writes it or, or or pen name as they would say, right for the for it. He sends it out through his agent, played by my man John Ortiz, um, and <laughs> to his surprise, <laughs> uh, the book becomes like the 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 darling book deal offer and they all love it and all of the very white publishing industry people are like yo this is that book let's get it going and the public his his agent is like i mean look that's money bro like you gotta like stay with it you know they they go through their thing he he begins to kind of you know make make a stag R. lee and he goes into this long um this long kind of charade, you know, of, of 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 doing the book deal and being conflicted about it. He's also dating a woman named, uh, played by Erica Alexander, who's like a new kind of relationship. And there, there there's there's that element, and then also his family dealing with his brother who comes into town and is and you know putting his mother into into a home, and and it becomes this full thing going through where you know by the end of the the, the film. He has to reconcile with it all in a particular way. Um, I actually don't think we have to reveal that. I don't think I have to reveal the ending right now to kind of get. I think I think the synopsis is kind of there, and that that's kind of the the main conflicting crux of the film. You think there's anything else that that needs to be added? The only, uh, well, just just for me. And what became more and more clear the more and more I thought about it is that a lot of why I like the film is that so much of the basic storyline resonates personally. So that's yeah. why when I saw 
Core Jefferson in, in an interview say when he read the original mm-hmm. book, he felt that way about the book that the book had been written for him. Mm-hmm. So, and, and 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 so I I got that there's a certain lane of professional black professional that that this book re- will relate to. And a, and, a, and, a, and a worsening, creeping suspicion has started to evolve ever since then. But that was initially it. So there was so much about the, the and I thought they got it. I just wanted to add a few things about that. I thought they did very well in, in I thought it was written well and acted well. I was laughing immediately out the gate, which is mm-hmm. rare for me. And uh, uh, the the way they d- depicted some of the tensions of being a professor in the classroom, mm-hmm. of watching the fame of <laughs> of people you feel are just not deserving, mm-hmm. but who are fame famous specifically. And this is the one point I wanted to highlight initially: their fame is specifically tied to their appeal to a white audience. That it's that's. That, that it's the white audience saying, this is the version of blackness we want. Yeah. So Issa Rae's character, which I thought in some ways was interesting in terms of, of she being the one playing this role, that, that her character is the one, and it's a fairly conscious decision. I'm giving them the version that they want. Of mm-hmm. this black experience, not necessarily to tell any truths of the black experience. And he's frustrated by that. Uh, and, and I've, and I used to joke that you know, I said, I forgot the year, but I said, if we haven't, you know, if we're not on the verge of revolution, I'm gonna write the, how Obama changed my life book and get paid. <laughs> and it was just a joke. So to see him sort of play out the joke and then to have it be responded to that way. So I thought that was, but that's it. That's yeah. Just, so, you know. and the mother, the mother, and I had just visited my mother yeah so i'm like watching this part and i'm like oh man so there was a lot of like emotional heart strings being pulled the timing of it this whole moment of uh uh um uh, rethinking where you are with your career the midlife crisis you're you're raising kids but you're also sort of r- caring for the, the the devolution of parents yeah devolving parents with the almost exact same issues and I was just like, you know, going when they're going and looking for 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 places to put his mother, mm-hmm. that whole experience. I was just like, man, I was just in there in my feelings. So so I was just like, man, this movie they they're just capturing everything, mm-hmm. and and so I was in, enjoying it for that. But I got you. Go ahead. But yeah. that's no excuse. That's no excuse. So no, I'm here for no. It, so. Well, that that's actually <laughs> no. But that's part of actually what I want to talk about, and I think right. this is and. I don't think American fiction is unique in doing this kind of thing. Mm -hmm, It's actually mm -hmm. an old Hollywood tactic Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, that mm -hmm. sadly black Hollywood has sapped up and Mm -hmm. gone right into. I mean, I I, I won't digress into this too too much, but I think it it doesn't. uh, I think I think it's important to do this. I I watched Rustin also in the same two days that I watched this, and I saw the same tactics. What what, what, oh Rustin? Rustin. Right, right. There is this way of taking what's actually very real about our lives and using it as cover. And um, but I'm gonna get to that. One thing I do want to shout out, yeah, shout out to Leslie Uggams as the mom. Mm. It was great to see her in something. She's from Black Girl back in the '70s, like you know, like I was like, "Why wow, that's Leslie Uggams?" I, I had a moment. Mm. I was like, "Whoa, mm. whoa!" I was mm. I was kind of blown back. I was like, "I haven't seen Leslie Uggams in something in a while." She probably is in things that I don't see, but maybe I. But I was very like happy. She was very good. Yeah. I thought I thought in the movie. I thought even 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 if not underused a bit. Um, I mean, it's my problem with my own. It's my own critique. I fall into my own trap. Like it, the fact that things are performed well, and I think mm-hmm. at times in this case, I thought written well and all. I mm-hmm. I just I had a good time. So I'm saying, but that makes it harder sometimes to see. Mm-hmm. For some, for for me in this case, apparently, yeah, what's really going on. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So, I think like how I try to always look at movies and art for me is it. 
it's a battleground of ideology, like 100%. Mm. And I get very, very interested in viewpoint. Like, what's the viewpoint of this artist, of this person? Like, kind of how you would do with a, an, an article. Mm-hmm. What, what's the thesis? What is it? What it? What it? What? Are, how are you trying to get me? And I do that both in form and content. It's not mm-hmm. just what it's talking about; it's how it's talking about it. And I'm like, okay, what? What? What's happening? It. You know, visual representation. You know, it's all myth making. Movies are myth making. You know, they're making rep- represent representational images, and they want to produce us these things. You know, and you know, I was I was reading some Stuart Hall recently, um, kind of going back through him, and he he, he says this really interesting thing about how when we mythologize others and what it says about ourselves and how we try to create you know structures of mythology of others and how we try to then position ourselves within it and when i looked at american fiction i saw this like dilemma um that i don't think jefferson is very uh the director is very honest uh, where I think the book Erasure is extremely honest. And so I kind of have like five points that I kind of wrote out. And I, and I think and I'll, I'll, I'll read the five points and then we can go through them. So my first point is the black bourgeoisie looks to give themselves cover. Ghettoism is the new straw man. I'll get to that in a minute. The crisis of number two, the crisis of liberalism and individualism instead of embracing social individuals in popular black art. Copying popular Western form has distorted our expressions of self. That's number three. Melodrama doesn't render humans to a uh, doesn't render humans. Let me go back. Melodrama doesn't render humans in order to appeal to our heartstrings. It believes in moralism, good and evil. Melodrama and liberalism find a comfort with each other due to their shared tendencies of moralism and the highlighting of the individual versus the world. This is another one part that I've had to come to. Catharsis is not in itself positive. It is a happening. And like all happenings can can be manipulated for influence and control. Number four, and this is probably my biggest issue, the distortion of white racism as bad attitudes rather than specific agenda-driven machinations. White liberals don't mind being told they have a lack of sophistication when it comes to race. What makes them nervous is when you paint them as real predators and exploiters, and American fiction goes out of its way to not do that. Racism as a juvenile bad attitudes and not a structural control and in a Hollywood a structural oh sorry I wrote this wrong. Racism as juvenile bad attitudes and not structural control. And in Hollywood, it is all about structural control of image. And number five, the film diverges from the book in curious ways that expose a viewpoint of the black bourgeois class and their lack of courage to engage in a critical self-analysis. So part one, the, the black bourgeois looking to give themselves cover, ghettoism is the new straw man. So I think it's really important. Too many, I need to interrupt you. I Go need ahead. to interrupt you. Yeah, now listen, that's called my boy. You know nothing about that. Thank you. Thank you. Please Thank go you. ahead. So I think with the first part, it's important to kind of give context to Erasure and when it was written and why it was written. Erasure was published in 2001 um, by Percival Everett, and it was his response. I don't think it was solely to this, but I think it was probably the overarching. It was his response to a book that we that we've become very famous called Push written by a woman named Sapphire. People may not know Push, but they know the movie that became Push. It is called Precious. Uh-huh. Right. Um so Precious uh you know Push when it came out was a mega hit. I think it's the late 90s. I, I if I'm I the mid to late 90s. It was a mega hit. And um 
I mean, it's such a mega hit that Sapphire, the writer, for 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 a number of years, pushed off getting an, a a movie made of it before uh, Lee Daniels went in and made uh, what we now know as Precious. So there was a, a, at that time a huge issue with the publishing of these ghetto novels and ghetto realism and uh, the 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 hood life. I I will not not acknowledge that that was not a huge problem. And um and if you read Erasure, there's even some nods to Native Son in it. And I know other people. I know other people have mentioned he's definitely. I, I don't know if he's going out to to, to criticize Native Son as much as he's maybe thinking like maybe Native Son's legacy has become distorted. As you know, we, we've gone through decades, and decades and decades of novels of these kind of ghetto ghetto tales, right? Um, I mean, one thing about the book. Actually, I'll get to that in number five. But uh, so, but now we're in twenty twenty three. And I have to say, I find hard to think that this ghettoification thing is a huge problem in publishing and in movie media. It's not. In publishing, some of the biggest writers we have now are, are people who write from a very different perspective. Everyone from Marlon James to the Zadie Smiths to the... Um, uh, what's what's the sister's name? Uh, Chimamanda Adichie, right? These are the people who were celebrated, and also the the things that are getting option books like the other black girl, uh, the hate you give, these different perspectives. Now I'm not saying I I'm not putting a criticism on these these books. What I'm kind of saying is that the landscape has changed and. The landscape has gone to a different kind of interest for blackness. Now, I don't necessarily think this is a good interest that they have. I, I actually have my criticisms of some of those authors, like Zadie Smith and some of the other people and their some of their work. Um, but the interest has changed. Now, in movies, which Core Jefferson, I've seen in his interviews, he seems to be really interested in. That is not true. I, like, like. The black bourgeois class is 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 now allowed to regurgitate things about themselves in today's popular media. I mean, look at everything from Origin that's coming out with Ava, by Ava DuVernay to you know everything from Everybody Hates you know Everybody Hates Chris Blackish. We have TV shows like that, uh, Harlem. The, the predominant uh, the predominant expression of black Hollywood is one of of itself of its socially mobile aiming to be socially mobile self right it is the predominant vision that exists it, the, the boys in the hood day is not here in 2023 right now why would Jefferson? be interested in that and I, I can i can kind of get into that in a moment but ghettoism is this kind of straw man that exists for me for a lot of these people not wanting to honestly self-critique the work that they're doing which i also find a lot of that work to be very 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 um curious and suspect creating out social ideologies that are very very in tune with the you know pro america project as long as you know dei and representation is 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 supported so forth and so on right as long as these things are good you know we're fine with going with hollywood and hollywood stuff just give us our place you know meet our dei uh, mandates let us tell stories about ourselves which I'll get into the later points are just kind of, to me, black faced image, uh, black face story uh, renderings of white envisioning and white Americanized envisioning of self here in America. And I had to ask myself, I was like, well, why? Why is he interested in doing this? Like, why? Why? do you create this kind of straw man? And I was like, it's a way to, to deflect self-critique in the media that they're producing. 
because I just don't see it. I've been in I've been in this thing for a long time, and I tell you that is not something that is asked at all. You know, the ghetto, the get rich or die trying. Uh, uh, uh. It's not something that is asked at a high clip much anymore. So, all I would all. I... I didn't read it that way. So that's my hesitation. Mm-hmm. So one, I haven't read the book. So having mm-hmm. heard you say that that the, the ghettofication effect began as a response with the, to push with the initial book, mm-hmm. I had just assumed, without those specific details, that that's what was happening. That this was... The, but But I read the trope as speaking to and this is just me it was just clearly projecting i this was me i saw them using that trope to make the point that i would prefer it have been made on the basis of neoliberal politics because the second part of what you said i do fully agree with this was and it it didn't really it it only increasingly started i made a note about it Maybe right around the time you and I were setting this up, but but it didn't dawn on me clearly until after the fact. I will admit that that th- it, there there is this this is the black bourgeoisie's self defense mechanism. This is or this is them. So I got that. I got I got caught up and and in, in missed that initially. So but but the ghetto part, the ghettoification part, where that trope being used. On the one hand, I think it's it's definitely not like what it used to be. Mm-hmm. But I but I but I still think there is a, a a version of that that plays out in, for instance, some of the pop cultural presentation of blackness, but also in this in this what I'm increasingly focused on the black podcast media space that argues around quote unquote financial literacy, because underneath all of that argument that is used to legitim to, to give legitimacy to their argument is this is us coming out of the hood and overcoming yeah. the hood. And that narrative is often attached and used by the black spokespeople themselves and also white supporters to say, See, this is how you, you know, now they came out of the hood and did this. So how can you be critical? But uh, I totally yeah, no, that's, actually, that's you know, actually, right on, right on. That would be a compelling movie. That <laughs> would be that would be a compelling film. Right. Mm. To say. Ghettoism has now been. Morphed, and, morphed and and and, and uh, hijacked. Mm. By uh, by the current narrative of capitalism and black capitalism, though I I mean we could argue, and I'm, I know you've made this argument, and many people have that you know uh, hip hop and the kind of like street hustler thing has had a bad relationship to, to capitalism for a long time, but now there's been a way that it's been lionized. I mean, you know, I live in Brooklyn, man, and I, I I've had to go by that Jay Z thing at the the, the what you would call it the at the library several wow. times and it's it's a it's a I, I have to kind of stop pause and breathe <laughs> at that and I think that's a compelling thing but American fiction still wants to live in an old got you usage of the of, of the ghetto which is like what unsophisticated and even I, I, I'll, it, it, there's another part of that that I'll get into a kind of unsophistication. And I, and, but I think making it unspecific straw men's are best when you make them unspecific, when you make them kind of generalized. And I, the, the film kind of generalizes it ghetto, ghetto, right. Ghetto speak and father, son and shoot dad thing. It, it just wasn't very specific. Well, I have to say in the book, it's much more specific, which I'll get to in a second. Mm. Um, so, the second one uh, point is the crisis of liberalism and individualism instead of embracing the social individual in popular black art. Copying popular Western form has distorted our expression of self. This is probably the most complicated and I, I could probably do a whole thing on this for like an hour <laughs> in itself. So. 
actually, what I'm going to do is this, the third point will answer the second point. Let me go. Let me go to the third point and put the second point together. Um, so melodrama. Hollywood's main function and main usage of storytelling is melodrama. Well, really, there's two things, melodrama and the hero's journey. Right now, we kind of have to just uh, distill the two things with, with the balloons. <laughs> hilarious. Um, put in, put in, you know, we have to put in with, with what these two things are. First, uh, melodrama. The individual lives in a, in a world that is, you know, emotionally hostile. Um, they have to try to sift through the, 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 the difficulties of the world individually and find themselves, right? Discover themselves. And really becomes, it really is a battle of the self completely, right? Um, they're mostly domestic, deal with, deal with domestic issues. So, um, you know, whether it's like love or familial issues or, you know, marriage, so forth and so on, those types of things uh, really kind of go into a melodrama. And melodrama is really into bad people and good people, right? Um, uh, overcoming your own issues. And in many ways, your own issues are of your making, right? Often they are perception-based, not structurally based. I think you know where I'm getting at. Right, they're not the structures around you. Some and sometimes they they will have the structures around you, but that's I, I think of Sydney Poitier movies in this way with always my difficulties with them. Yes, the world is racist, but the most important thing you can do is rise above it. That's what makes Mr. Tibbs so good is that you know the the, the racists come down on Mr. Tibbs, but he never goes he never goes as low as them. Right? Well, well, we they go low, we go high. <laughs> the slap response gets uh, gets an exaggerated. It's almost it was like the the Alabama boat uh, uh, rebellion of its day. It's it, yeah. It, it's it's this beautiful scene, but it gets this some almost an overdone importance put on it. Uh, because yeah. people just so happy to see, just viscerally happy to see, man, somebody white got punched in the mouth, man. Exactly. You know, but everything else is right. You're right, and 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 he's able to rise above it. I, I watched a film um, that he was in, one of his early films called No Way Out, with him and um, Richard Widmark. And Richard Widmark is like this racist man who basically says, you know, he you killed my he 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 basically says uh, Poitier kills his brother, uh, who and Poitier plays plays a doctor, so he goes on this kind of racist witch hunt. For Port to Portier, right? And Portier is always just, you know, slightly the bigger man in everything. To the point where you know, and 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 because he's the bigger man, he can outsmart them, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, maybe I don't want to be the bigger man. And <laughs> maybe I want, maybe it's like we are the lesser man, and we just, you know, smack him back. That's real life. But I digress. Well, what if that is being bigger? And the, well, then that's the other thing, right? That's the other part that they don't want to allow, right? So, American fiction, how I experience in movies like this is that they they exist in a very liberal point of view of the world. That the world is, you know, full of hostile things. They don't have much context to them, right? Um, they are specific because they happen to us, whether it's um, familial issues or, you know, career issues. And and even when they attempt to add in things like the student. Look, I'm a professor as well. I've had the same moments where that young, that young white woman student said that thing to him. I, I've had it myself where she says to him that he's being racist, making them say the N-word in class, right? At the very beginning of the movie, right? I've had that moment and I can totally empathize with it. Um, but the entire film, I kept waiting for a larger critique of what exactly is this white mentality, ideology, and project. 
And all I got was white people are pretty unsophisticated when it comes to race. That's all I really got. And I'll get to that in a moment um, further. That's all I really got there to the point where, and because they have power, it fucks with our lives. But that's really the summit of the whole thing. And that's a very American way of looking at um, outside forces uh, that are that are hostile, not just when it comes to like white racism. They do the same thing with like Nazis. They, they really like the idea that like uh, or, or Nazis or white supremacists are like unsophisticated. Right, the unsophisticated thing, the what, it, what, it, what it, the redneck or the the, the redneck, the, the deplorable, the, the deplorable, right? Mm -hmm. right? That mm -hmm. it's a it's a very American trope, and Jefferson, Corey Jefferson, is using that trope and flipping it on white people, right? Which I think could be interesting if it was done within an acknowledgement that it's not real, or that it goes further than that. Like, if you wanted to use it as, as like a kind of satirical uh, mach machination to kind of play with how movies are made, I'd be totally into it, you know? And I, there are people who do it. I think a, a film that I think you could contrast with this, that, that this film does so much, is so much better, is Hollywood Shuffle. Hollywood Shuffle does it. But I have to say, in Hollywood Shuffle, those white people, they have a lot of real strong control. And they dictate. They're the way that they kind of maneuver in in Hollywood Shuffle is a lot different than I see how they wor worked in American fiction, right? And it's like I rewatched Hollywood Shuffle about two days after American Fiction. I had to. Mm. I, I I had the new. I had I, the, 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 the a, a Blu-ray had came out, and I had to watch it. I was like, I haven't seen it in a couple of years. Let me watch it. And I watched it, and I was struck at how Robert Townsend he keyed into. A couple of things, but a the way white people have constructed a system that's really just oppressive in a in 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 a, but but in a very in a very deliberate way. Like his whole black acting school skit. If if people have not seen the black acting school skit, like they like you, you gotta watch that skit. That skit, it, just watch that skit. You don't even, you should watch the whole movie, but go Google the black acting school skit or the, the 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 scene where they want the Eddie Murphy type. You know the it, it, the hostility in American fiction. They were more clueless, and I, I look. I've I was an actor. <laughs> Oh, you can show it. Show it. it's fun. I mean, it, yeah, I didn't know if you would. Do it. I'll Do it. show it. Yeah. Do it. I, yeah, it's yeah, so hold good. Hold it's so good. Oh, and this cat. This cat. This cat's too much on the side. Turkey. This is bullshit. <laughs> what? This is bullshit. What are you talking about? This is some more the white man stereotype of a black man, yeah, brother. Really? <laughs> yeah, brother. Only an Uncle Tom would do this shit. They just <laughs> looking for somebody to sell out. Sell out? The only role they gonna let us do is a slave, a butler, or some street hood or something. Don't sell out, brother. Don't be a butler or a slave. Please don't hurt him. Jesse Wilson. Jesse Wilson, you're next. That's me. Good luck, brother. Yeah, <laughs> uh, so. Oh, here we go. You could go, you could go. Yeah, he starts, he starts this part. <laughs> You ain't gonna have no freedom back then. <laughs> what, what if we get caught? What if we get caught? I'll kill you if you don't stop that crime. And I'll kill anybody else that stands in the ways of freedom. Now we ain't going back. That day ain't not our home. So let's move. <laughs> Why are they in jeans? I know. <laughs> This part's great. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. I'll stop it after this part right here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh no, you have to watch when he breaks character, though. I'm sorry, you have to. Go no, no, the that's whole my game. part. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Dingo, I was going anywhere with you. Man, Dingo, I love you. I love you too, Bessie. Willie May. Man, Dingo. Man, Dingo. <laughs> I can't go back there. I love you too, Mandingo. But Miss Ann, what about your kinfolk? I don't care. I'm going with you. Hi, my name is Robert Taylor, and I'm a black actor. I had to learn to play these slave parts, and now you can too, at Hollywood's first black acting school. Black it teaches you everything. School. Learn jive talk 101. You motherfucking jive turkey motherfucker. All right, all right, that's good, that's good. You work, all right, you try it. Instructor. <laughs> you, you fucking mothers... No, 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 man, no, 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 that's wrong, that's wrong. Watch me, man. Just be cool. Jaff, tricky motherfucker! Good boy, good boy. That's only the beginning. So, I mean, yeah. But, so, I had actually... So that was... Uh, but you're saying... So when I, one of the responses I had was that American fiction is an updated, it's an, another version of this kind of film. Mm-hmm. And that it, it's not meant to provide the overall revolutionary critical analysis, but it's it it does something that pushes enough buttons to to apparently trick even people like me from time to time into thinking yeah. it's a better film than it is. But but you're saying that that I'm not even right there. That there's that that there's more of a difference between what these two films do. Yeah. So. Because the problems have changed or updated or morphed. And this is why I've always found the work that people like yourself do and the media work and the idea, the ideas of how these liberal, pro liberal, pro America, pro um, socially mobile and social mobility narratives. And this idea that if black people just had a li- a, a level playing field, uh, we had less hostility from white people, that everything could be okay and we could be our great individual selves. And through all the work that black radicals like yourself and the names that I could just list for all the time that we've been here, we all know that's bullshit, for lack of a better word. It's a structural project that needs us subjugated and is fine elevating certain ones of us who will be agreeable to the project just in, you know, uh, as long as, you know, we, 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 we go along and, 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 they get, and they get their penance from them, right? And that's where this movie is. And Hollywood Shuffle, to me, was a... Res- the, th- the interesting thing about Hollywood Shuffle as a film, when I rewatched it, it's a film that acknowledges that the structure is really poor for Black expression. 
And it also acknowledged a certain naivete that this young black man had about what Hollywood was in general. And he's left kind of just, what is this, right? At the end of the day, he makes a post office commercial and he says he could always work for the post office, right? And there is no real conclusion as much as there's a statement of where it is at the moment. American fiction uh, gets a lot wrong. I'm not saying it has like a like this is what we, what we have to do, but I think well actually I do think it is doing that. But I'll talk about that. That's a structural thing within the film, which I'll get to in a moment. Um, but actually, I'll get to it right here. So, what Jefferson does, and I think this is kind of slick. What he tries to do, though I don't think it's uh, executed well, is. So he has the the negative, right? The, what he sees is the negative, the 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 ghetto tropes, right? So he provides to us in real time what he thinks we should be watching, which is black family stories, right? Which is his own uh, the story of of Ellison. We're supposed to be watching what he thinks we should be watching, right? Which on itself. Or on its own face, I have no problem with. I love stories about black families. Um, to Sleep with Anger by Charles Burnett is to me one of the great films in American history, right? Great, great film about a, about a black family. If, 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 you haven't, if y'all haven't seen that one, that's a great one. Danny Glover, early 90s. Uh, Burnett's known for his very famous Killer of I don't Sheep even film. I remember hearing it at. Say the name of it again. Uh, to Sleep, Sleep with, with Anger. Anger. To Sleep Anger. with Anger. Yeah. Um, Burnett's mostly famous for his Killer of Sheep film from the 70s, which has been lying. It's a great film. Um, but I think To Sleep with Anger is a better film. I think that's his 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 best, best piece. Um, okay. But yeah, Danny Glover, Mary Alice, Cheryl early Cheryl Lee Ralph. Paul Butler, wow. Yeah, okay. Paul I'm, Butler's Cheryl in it. Cheryl Lee Ralph. Now, yeah. now, now, now we've really messed up because that's my that's my childhood among my childhood yeah. crushes uh -huh. right there. For sure. That's, yeah. I mean what are we doing that I didn't even see this? I've never even heard of this film. This is a phenomenal film. Phenomenal film about a black family in LA who have migrated from the South. And it's a generational story. Of like the and, and Danny Glover comes from the south to visit them, so wow, there's, there's a okay. there's a bit of a of a of a of a, of, a, of a a supernatural element to the film to a degree. And I grew up. Mary Alice was in everything I grew up watching. I know, man. I mean, she like was in a, a lot of stuff. A different world comes there. on. You like Mary Alice, man, right there. Mary Alice was the wow, she, right. She's a, she's 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 one of our our greats. You know? Okay, wow. All so right. on its face, I have no problems with story. I actually support and encourage stories about the black family. But you can't fall into the same tricks that white people do about stories about their own familial lives. And that's where, to me, melodrama needs to be rejected by us. It needs to be rejected by us. I'll get more specific in a, in a second. Now, I, I think I'll start with this part because um, I want to respond to, like, you talking about, like, you seeing things in the, in the film and how it resonates. So I always say catharsis. I say this to my students. Catharsis is not in itself positive. Now, this is not an original thought. Um, it actually comes from very revolutionary artists way before me, from like Bertolt Brecht in Germany, who was who was very wary of catharsis. He saw he saw it as a way to um, control masses emotionally and not m let them look at the structural issues that are making these things happen. Um, Augusto Boal, uh, the great theater artist in Brazil, radical theater artist, uh, created theater of the oppressed, was like, no, 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 no. It's not that he was against catharsis as much as he was saying, how do we put it in a politically active way? And if it's not done politically active, it is inherently controlling and pro the people who have control, who have social control. 
So look, I ha- also have issues with f- f- family caretaking, and I I get it. And I always tell this interesting story. Um, one time that I. Uh, with, with an ex of mine, she was watching the movie Bicentennial Man. I don't know why she was watching it. She was just watching it. It was just the movie with um, um, uh, Robin Williams where he's like the kind of android who takes care of people, right? right? right yeah. So I step in. She's watching it. And I sit and I watch it for 20 minutes. I'm not really enjoying the movie, but I'm watching it. And there's a sequence in the film because he's kind of like a caretaker and like a domestic worker of like this family. And I have a an emotional thing with domestic workers because my grandmother was a domestic worker. And whenever I think about the kind of domestic worker and the kind of complication with it, my heartstrings kind of like get a little bit. And I can't lie, in a moment of bicentennial, man, I got a little emotional. So does that does that immediately make bicentennial man a good film? No, it means I have a lot of stuff. It makes it the best film ever. Right. But no, it makes it means I have a lot of stuff that I'm still dealing with with that. And that's real. And that's why I never disacknowledge people's emotional connections to things and moments. But we have to also acknowledge those go a lot of you know that in media studies. There's a no, lot I, of ways. I, I'm a- I, I mean, look, I, I this is a perfect example of of on the one hand how you're right. My initial analysis is right. And I've just not I just fell victim to the to the I just got caught. But that's how that's it always happens. I, and and you're not and I'm saying and it's not a unique thing. This is what they oh, do. Oh no. Yeah. Because we've been trained under the melodrama thing that if these things happen they are in, immediately important. And that's what things like Rustin to me get really egregious. I was watching Rustin, and the thing that really began to stand out to me about Rustin, um, amongst a billion other things, was this excessive use of trying to frame him in a way as this individual that we had to emotionally care for everything was against him and i'm not saying he didn't have hardship i look look i'm not saying that at all but they make it they try to make it criticism proof by making the emotional melodrama the centerpiece of his meaning and really the the meaning of life and american fiction does it the same way so you have um the, the part with his mom which is really real the thing with his brother, which is also very real. The thing with his sister. But I'll get to that in number five. They change them from the novel in ways that actually level a critique of the black bourgeoisie. Ooh. And, yeah, and- let's I mean, just 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 very quickly, this is this is exactly my point about we should not want to see ourselves in these films. And I I got caught up all in it. As soon as I saw myself, I was like, this is a must see. We deserve it. I had such a good time. I was like, we deserve to have a good time in a movie. Like, it's rare. I was like, this is why it's going to be a, 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 a released only in a handful of theaters. Like, they're, they're going to let it be made, but not not let it really thrive. Mm-hmm. But But thrive or not, you are pointing out exactly correctly all that it it is doing and i just got i just got caught so yeah keep going keep going uh, yeah so and uh, you know and i mean let me yeah so what it does and jefferson for me um i this is where i have questions for him if i ever talk to him why he diverged from the book because either he understood the book from a particular vantage point or he decided that the certain critiques that are it within the book he didn't want to do and then i and then i have major questions of why he does not want to do those um but i want to get to that in in a minute the ne- the next point that i want to get to is is the thing about white racism in the film right and when I said the distortion of white racism as bad attitudes rather than the specific agenda-driven machinations. So 
I have to say, I think the evidence is on the back end. American fiction is loved by white liberal media. They love this movie. I mean, it was a, an audience award at TIFF. Right. Um, the only That's reason why all you need to, you, you can yeah. just say less. That's yeah. all I need to know. Damn. Yeah, I mean, the reason why it's a smaller <laughs> release because it, it's really it's really an art house film. I mean, the budget is is the, is the budget up there? It had to have been fiction. low, but uh, oh I think it's a, man, it's probably, it's probably a ten. I, I, if I had to do a guess, I'm thinking in the ten million range. Uh, which is look, which I'm is, while you look that up, I'm gonna defend myself by saying the reason my antennas weren't weren't elevated enough is because they were not overtly dealing with a political figure, as in Rustin, right? Or 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 or, and it was not an overt overt assault on Black radical history. Which mm -hmm. is usually where I'm more, more, more ready. <laughs> but like, all they had to do, there. all they had to do, all they had to do was put like two, three little things in there that I could identify with about what I'm living through right now, and I just. But that's fell how apart. slick Hollywood so is. is. I, no, that's I know how that's slick why. Hollywood I, is. I, that's how yeah. slick Hollywood is, and 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 this new crop <laughs> of black movies. <laughs> God because they want to, they want us to believe that we're in this black renaissance. And I gotta say, I mean, like we're, we're uh -huh. about to come down the pike with some more movies. I mean, Origin is coming, and I'm gonna tell you, Origin. I haven't seen it, but I could already smell Origin is gonna be a problem. Well, I know they, they. I already said they got the the Bob Marley film coming out. Oh next gosh, year. they I got saw the trailer. Um, <laughs> I saw the, I mean, the, the trailer, I, again, that's where it's easy, easier for me to yeah. catch it. I was like, just in the trailer, just the way they situated it around one particular concert, not the last one, not the one in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. but the one where he could be seen holding hands and holding up the politicians and doing all that other shit. I mean, that's, they, yeah, just that alone, the framing, they got us. But, yeah. But all they got to do is say, talk about a professor watching other people get shined while his shit gets sidelined. And I'm in there yeah. like, ah, oh, it's a must see movie. This but is the greatest the same thing. Formula. It's the uh, same exact oh, formula. Oh, I know. It's the I, same exact formula. And, and, and Hollywood is built on that formula. And, and, and I, I, I believe that when we start looking at these films that are made by Hollywood and, and black Hollywood within it, wait, we have to accept that they're made within this same formula. Now, what is this? What is origin here? Mom made me oh. I come by today. It's my birthday. Wait, today is your birthday? Yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday. Um... It's, it's Brett. <laughs> oh, I miss the bell. Yeah, I know. Oh, and that's your, the TIFF group you're talking about? Yeah. Most relationships end. Friendships, romances. They break. Oh, of course. You okay? If you look closely, you'll find something tragic was happening. Are you interested in writing something for us? I don't oh. do assignments oh. anymore. Yeah, well, you're a better writer than most people do anything. Have you heard the tapes? No. Uh, of what? Not Blair. Stafford Police Department, this is Sean. Hey, we've had some break-ins in my neighborhood, and there's a real suspicious guy. He looks like he's up to no good or something. Oh, no! I want to be in the story. Really inside the story. And build a thesis that shows how all of this is linked. I gotta be honest with you, I don't understand. I don't see it. You go and write your stories. Folks need to know about this. You're trying to make sense of racism, but your thesis is flawed. It was all lies. They knew we weren't inferior. You don't escape trauma by ignoring it. You escape trauma by confronting it. I don't write questions. I write answers. Yo. Problem. 
Problem. <laughs> so many problems. Problem. I mean, that book is a problem in itself. And then, you know, Ava DuVernay has been a problem for a little bit. But now that that book is converging with Ava DuVernay, we're not going to have. And this is part of a project. This is, I, 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 back when I had Within Our Gates, I, I did, we did an episode um, on One Night in Miami, a film I, I, I really hated. And, and I remember. I agreed. I hated yeah. it. And, and, and one of the things that I had kind of came to was there's this way that this black Hollywood class, this black misleadership class people are trying to prop themselves as the new prophets. And movies like Origin, um, uh, One Night in Miami are part of that project. Like, you need to come to us. We are the people who are going to lift you to tomorrow, you, so forth and so on. And and then I, I, I find like American fiction kind of sits in that as the kind of artistic realm of that world. Like this is the criticism. This is the, 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 the artistry that we should be supporting and creating and so forth and so on. Right. And it's 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 really part of a project that's really about themselves and propping up themselves and centering and, we're just and pick centering on the hood themselves. and we'll pick on the ghetto we'll pick on the hood again they're the right. real problem we're not the problem we just right. want to have good oh uh, and i'm sitting here uh i'm like man they got him i got got what can i say and Oh man, and um, and because I even what? got caught up in the fact that they they partnered him with a black woman. Yeah, that the protagonist that 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 again, I thought it was cool the way they dealt with his brothers uh, coming out of the closet. Mm -hmm. I thought that was dealt with well. I thought I admit I thought it was pretty cool to see the in real life so-called biracial woman playing as a black black family's sister Tracy and Tracy Ellis, Ellis Ross mm -hmm. so I got got with that yeah. they even had they got me with even Jeffrey Wright was a little bit chubby bald and had a graying beard I was like <laughs> I'm like yo I'm like I mean like I'm sitting there like every so I liked all of that, and then, but but you're right. But but uh, uh, it's not offering a radical solution. It's not offering a revolutionary critique in any kind yeah. of way. It's not pointing towards any sort of yeah. uh, unsanctioned thought or response. And it's and it is and it is just again. I missed it until you said it. I read the ghettoization being sort of updated in. I was just projecting onto it. Everything you said is right. I have no, I have no real response. But, Everything you said I, is right about and it. And I, and I think part of it is, is this. I, I haven't seen the show, but a friend of mine told me the, the, the TV show, the other black girl. They do a similar thing, mm. where there's a, um, um, uh, a, 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 I think, I think it's a white person writes like a ghetto novel, and it, and it, and it, 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 it goes, and and. Mm -hmm. There, there is real no real self critique from the black bourgeoisie class in Hollywood. They have no self critique, mm -hmm. no self awareness. It's, 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 it's. No, they're winning, they're, and because 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 they're winning, and and they're really good at then also weaponizing when they have problems. I mean. I don't really want to get into it. It's, it's part of my issue with with the Taraji Henson stuff that's been going around. Look, we said the same thing. We had a similar discussion, not only, well, a similar discussion, because I know it, I, this part we're on the same, I'm, I'm with you. When when the uh, uproar around Nicole Hannah-Jones and her treatment by academia came up, we had a very, there was some of us had a very similar reaction. Even some got published in the Chronicle of Higher Education where a couple of black scholars were like, I mean, yo, um, not that, that we don't feel bad for her, but let's not let's not lose sight of how black faculty, how real actual black faculty actually get dealt with. Right. This is not 
this is not, you know, it, it was the same. It was like another version of why are we turning OJ <laughs> into a, you know, even back in the, in the day, it was like, right. why is OJ being repped at the Million Man March? <laughs> like, right. It's like, right. we're not, this isn't the right. So, yeah, I get and it. They, and, get like, it. and like Taraji or Monique's pay becomes a, a black political pa- platform. And when she cries over not, that is Henson cries over not, I guess, doing enough to, 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 for Fantasia and everyone else who are starring in the new color purple. Right. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, that is, that is the, the political act of today that's major. And also oh, equivalent man. to like what Malcolm and Fannie Lou, yeah. you know, all these yeah. people were doing back in the yeah. day. Like that's our new political battleground. Oh, no doubt. Hollywood. And I'm like, really? I'm like, that's no the new political battleground. I'm like, y- y'all tripping. And that's I think that goes right into the right into the point where white people are fine with their depictions in things like American fiction because it doesn't really get into what they're doing in Hollywood. And look, I, this is why I, I, I don't love going anecdotally, but I have to just go. I was an actor since I was 13 years old. And I was in this thing for a long time. And it, it is so much more sophisticated than mm. American fiction will have you pretend it is. Mm. It is so much more sophisticated. Yeah, you do encounter the kind of um, clueless liberal. But the majority of people that I encounter from agents to managers who were white were hostile. Mm. Um, very sure of what they were trying to do. And um, and opportunistic as well. And displaying Hollywood in that way doesn't do much for the Issa Rays in the, of the world because then what, what immediately happens? You then, then question, well, then why is Issa Rae famous? Why is Ava DuVernay large? Why is... You know, Black Panther and Ryan Coogler are allowed to put the do these things because then you have to then question it and then go, OK, well, this must fit into their agenda in some way. They're fine with Wakanda forever. They're fine with all this stuff because it fits into their project. And because and then, what and Issa Rae can be in American fiction because her work, she would argue her work, she's she's producing the work. That, that Jeffrey Wright's character is 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 struggling to right. produce. Exactly. Yeah, and 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 I think I said it before. And the film is trying to kind of meta exist in in the critique of the the black ghetto. We'll show you the what what we should have, and this this black family thing. But it's steeped in melodrama and very western. Um, or American Hollywood tropes of stuff, which I think can get me to the last point. Um, so the, the first thing I'm going to say is I encourage everyone to read Erasure. Mm. That book is is powerful. Read Everett in general. He's a he's a great author. I've read four of his novels: uh, Erasure, I Am Not Sidney Poitier, which is a great book. It's a it's, oh, it's wow. a it's a weird satire book. It's a great uh his book trees and dr no i've read i've read those four but it read erasure the book the book has some weird divergences um the first divergence is the death of the sister the sister is murdered in the book by um activists something to do with in the in the medical field and yeah, and in the book, there's a kind of positing that his family lives in this different class. And hmm. because they live in this class, they're somewhat susceptible to violence of people below them. Interesting. So it's an interesting kind of positioning of them. Another big one and this one stuck out to me was the changing of the relationship of the domestic worker to their family in the film the domestic worker who works for them she is you know just part of the family 
And, you know, they, they treat her very well. They allow her to get married and things. You know, she gets married and they support her. In the book, it's not as clean. There is definitely a conversation around the social hierarchies of black class. With oh, but that would familiar. mess up the film. They can't do that. They're not going to do that. They're not. They're not going to go there. So has Everett said anything about the film? Because all I've heard was yeah. that he was happy to give over the rights. Yeah, and I saw an interview with him. And look, this is where I could be projecting. He didn't say a lot. He said he was very happy. He thinks Corey Jefferson did a great job. He feels like it's his book. He said that. Mm. But the clips are all like one minute long. Like he doesn't mm. do like a long kind of thing with it. So I don't know. Um yeah, I don't know. Um, another big change is more of his aesthetic. This is where I think some of the aesthetic um, lack of imagination. So when you, I don't know. Well, I'm sorry. I got. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Forgive me, everybody. But I have to interrupt here to say that this is why I've always I keep arguing people should not sign off on these adaptations. Yeah, because once you. you sign off on it. I, it doesn't matter what he really thinks. He can't come out now and slam the film that he happily gave. He wouldn't be able to even if he wanted to. It would have no weight. Sorry. That's you know what it. I know. No, it. you know what I liken it to, and I just thought about this. Remember when um, the Michael Rappaport uh, Tribe Called Quest doc came out? Yes. And there was all the rumblings that Tip wasn't really happy with it. Early I, was, on. I hate that. I'm I can't, still mad I think it's, about I think that it's awful. But it, I remember when it was being made, there was all this rumbling that Tip wasn't very yeah. happy. And they said the same thing about him. And then I remember seeing an interview when Tip was like, go see it. Like, go see it. You know, like, you could tell he was in a rock and a hard place by that point. I support it. It's out there. Go see it. Right. He was in a rock and a hard place by that point. But I do really wonder if you went to Q-Tip right now, what, 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 what would he say? With like, you know, I guess almost 20, almost 20 years removed from the doc coming out, right? Or another similar one. I remember when MC Ren was pissed at his um, rendering in the NWA movie. In the end of it, yeah. And he went on Twitter. But then he went on and said, nah, 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 you know, I'm tripping. Go see the movie. You know Cube and Drake called him. Somebody like, sent him a check. Exactly. <laughs> and then a check was like, hey, look, bro, we got you. We now, got even you. that to me is slightly less worse than the initial signing off on it. Because if you, mm -hmm. if you, if you take that in, to me, and again, nobody's asked me, so mm -hmm. I understand how it would be difficult. But, but if you take the initial, yeah, I sign away – turn it into a product, give me my cut, and then come out and condemn it. It just it just doesn't it 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 just looks worse. Yeah. If you could at least come out and say, I never signed off on it and this is trash. I got and then they come and say, but here's your check and then you're like, all right, well now go that's bad. I just think yeah. it's less bad than than so you that's why I'm saying just don't take the bag and then be critical of it because it's never going to be right. It's 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 never going to be good, even when people like me get suckered. We have you and others out here to remind us that no 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 no. So it's not going to be what we would ever hope it would be. Uh, but mm -hmm. yeah. So a couple of other big divergences from the book, and this is why mm -hmm. part of the the book is as as a piece of form is one of the most adventurous books I've ever read. So in the book. <laughs> You get this beginning of the story of him setting up everything. You have a you have a uh, an early part of the book where you read one of his papers that he writes, uh, Ellison. And to be honest with you, it isn't great writing. And you begin to actually consider that maybe the guy isn't as great as he thinks he is of a writer. And there is a a commentary that his his perception of his own blackness is actually a big problem in itself. And that while, yes, he is recognizing a structural issue, his response to the structural issue is also steeped in a, a I guess, how I would read it as a depoliticized um, act of self-absorption, right? But the, the, the book 
just pop shows it to be a kind of a bad read. Like, yes, he sees it, but his response to it is one of a, 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 a is a self kind of um, self soothing act, and that's it. It's not it's not a political act. It's not this great act, and that's why it gets it gets it gets chopped up. Uh, or 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 sucked up by the by by the by the publishing industry. But the great thing about it is, when you get to the book, you actually read eighty pages of the book, and you get you get all of it. And the movie uh, the movie had this one scene with Keith David, which I'm like, how did why did Keith David do that? I don't know. Anyway, maybe, maybe it must have through Keith Keith, but Keith must 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 have got a nice check for that one. Um, but. The, the, the lack of, I, I think, of formal adventurousness that the book has shows that he wants to tame the novel. That Jefferson wanted to tame the novel and make it palatable. The book is not tame. The book is real. I read it and I was very... I, w I was very un un uneven. I, I left with deep questions about everything my own perceptions of how i go about everything right um when i when i do have those moments of being like nah man that ain't the real shit i'm the real shit wait a minute you know like it 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 it, it, it screwed with me in that way and the fact that he changed that i think and or, or didn't i be as formally ad adventurous exposes how much he wanted to kind of tame the novel the other big what the, Another change that I, I I would have to read the book again in full that was curious to me is Issa Rae's character is not in the book. She's like, like or, or, I mean, she's in the book, but he never actually meets her. They add, they add. She's, 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 she's the characters in the book. You know about the book, but you don't have this whole interaction with them. It's, it's, it's. So she's not on this this panel of of award. Uh, uh... I forget how he finds the book, but the whole thing, yeah, the whole thing at the end, no, where they have a conversation. No, that's something that, that he made later, which I found to be kind of half-assed and not really well written. I thought it was trying to give a voice to the character i i wasn't quite sure what he was doing i thought it was i thought it was sloppy personally um and the other big thing is he changes the ending and so in in all of them what do you mean because i understand it because i understood that there's multiple endings not in the book and that i only so the, none of, but yeah, in the film the, though, but but the film no. I thought had multiple endings because oh. I I was told I only saw the first one. Yeah, the, no, there is a couple of different endings that happen in this one sequence where he discusses with the with the filmmaker about his different endings. But in the book, no, because what they what they so, do. But I'm saying, does the film get any of the ones that are in the nope. or any of the ones in the film? Nope. The one in the book, okay. No, because okay. because his base realization in the film and in the book are fundamentally different. His base realization is to admit what he's done. He never admits what he's done in the in the in the book. He just becomes Stagar Lee. Which is like haunting. You read it, and it's 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 haunting. He becomes this this person. It's so then the film life. has to, especially based on your correct re readjusted reading for me, the film has to do that. Yes, because they want to distinguish themselves, and if they As, don't, if they be, if they, because then they would have to acknowledge that they are all they have all become staggardly. Yeah, right, exactly. And 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 and, wow. and the fact that they 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 let him still be himself. And I, I when I saw that and be kind of on this, you know, yes, the white guy still has power over him, but now he could admit that we, what he's done, he's able to find the an end to that. Now he's working through it. In in erasure, there is no working through it. The minute he stepped into the shit, he gets he gets sucked into the quicksand. And it's over. And it's one of the more haunting endings I've ever, I've ever read. I remember I read, I read the end of Erasure, and I was like, "Oh shit, dude! I needed a, I needed a shower." You know, so I need, so I a, a so, long walk. So Hopping Bob had just come back and got me. He just, he just, he just pulled me back onto the, to the, to the, to the work camp. It was like, get you, get. <laughs> I, <laughs> and Tume kept running, but I got caught. 
I got caught. I mean, uh, but, 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 so, but, but oh, I, 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 but to me, it's, 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 <laughs> it's very typical of, of, of Hollywood production. And, and, and there is a sophistication that I think that's happening where they're understanding what can get people, you know, and make us ignore you know, all these other things. Like, I mean, I see that with Rustin. I'm like, to me, Rustin A is just a bad movie. Like, it's a, it's, I watched it. I was like, this movie's bad. You know, Domingo's acting to me is very self-important and, and, mm. and he's, he's, you could tell he's really trying to, in, in the film, <laughs> I tell him about Rustin, you're watching Rustin and he's in the center frame 80% of the movie. Hardly any two shots. If there's two shots, it's with him and his lover, or the two lovers. Wow! I, obviously, I, I yeah. would have never thought to think of it that way. And the two lovers, and or when he's out of out of a frame and he breaks into frame. So like in his the 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 the, mm. the, the, the round table scenes with like a Philip Randolph and uh, mm-hmm. is it Roy who, who Chris Rock plays Roy Wilkins but, I, Ralph. Is he Roy Wilkins or Ralph? I think Bunt? he's I can, I I think can't Roy Wilkins. Yeah, but when, You're probably when he right. whenever he remember. breaks into those sequences, mm-hmm. he's kind of like off center. Then he breaks in, so he, you know they, he he's the he's the center man, but he's been left out. I mean, it's 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 it's. It's stuff that you know you 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 look at in film studies stuff, and you're like, okay, cool, but you know, could you be a bit more uh, <laughs> subtle just in subtle, your <laughs> right, right, right? And it's just wow. It's, but they're using it to prop up um, the narratives of themselves, and it's 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 and it's a so, project so, that's, that's going to continue, and it's not going listen, to stop. Listen, unfortunately, it's definitely not going to stop. I unfortunately, I have I have a hard out. Similar, uh, I have I, at, I, at one I have o'clock. To get back to baby life. In, in, okay, in, 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 yeah. but so I, I just wanted. To, did you did you want to say a anything else about the film or anything else about these articles because? I will say it was very easy for me to identify my bias in reading the Garima article that you asked me to read because mm-hmm. I have a personal, I, I've just got a personal thing with him and Sankofa books. So I, which, I, which, I found which, it very which, difficult to, to, I struggled. The the uh, triangular cinema, Breaking yeah. Toys and Dink Nash versus Lucy. Yeah. Uh, and it, it's not that I, there's nothing I would argue against in what he wrote here in, mm-hmm. in the, the book. I just feel like his, his, I, I, I have to admit, it's just a complete bias. It is based on the, my experience in, in temporarily working, um, yeah. tangentially in that space, but just, just the, 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 the practice, the behavior doesn't match the, the, what he, what he wrote here. That's, well, that's no, why. Well, I, I, this could be a conversation for another time. Yeah, I we can, we can. Yeah. I actually don't disagree with you with that. I mean, I think, you know, and it shows someone like Ava DuVernay and I don't know Garima personally at all. I've, I've never, I've never met him. I, I have a, an immense amount of respect for his filmmaking and his film theory. Um, and uh, I've met his son several times too. Um, and he's a great brother. Um, but if there was an opportunity for me to have hmm, and uh, a conversation that was on like a really, I don't know, I guess like, like, like fair ground, I would have lots of questions about like his relationship with David DuVernay and so forth and so on. And I think I said that in, in an email. I think I said that in my email to you. So, Mm-hmm. Your your challenges, I, I and I, I so you know, if we were if we were going to take the time to go into the article, I would say more because I've, I've I've said some of it publicly. It's not, yeah. I mean, it's just it's just it is what it is. It's not. No, I completely and but, I completely, but, I completely, completely, completely hear you. So like like for like just quickly to to talk so much about the need for a it's to, to watch him write about his relationship as an African immigrant to the black American community. And then to watch him go to talk about the need for the, the, for black people to develop our own cinema culture and institutions and to see 
and and to know also that he's been at Sankofa for decades, been a professor at Howard for decades, and to not see any of what I don't see what he's claimed in here to materialize, mm-hmm. I think it speaks to both the experiences I've had in that space, mm-hmm. that others have had in that space, and that le- that have him working with Duvernay now, or seeming mm-hmm. to team up with her now. I think that there's a there's a there's a a, a, a thread there. But but his analysis here is 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 on point for the most part. I don't have much to say about that. Yeah. And then and to your point, his filmmaking, I'm not qualified. I, I and I, mm-hmm. I I have issues with Sankofa, especially looking back. I, I and the only other one I remember seeing more recently was the the was was Taser, mm-hmm. which I really enjoyed. And I but but so I'm not commenting on on that at all. It's yeah. just it's just my bias. In, in being no. in that space for a while. Look, I have the same questions. Trust me. Like I, I, I discovered his Garima and LA Rebellion work in my twenties, and um, his film Ashes and Embers, which I, th- I think is his best film, is is to me one mm. of the, the best films I've ever seen, and I, I watch it often. Um, I do have I, Sankofa. I have challenges with as well as a, as a piece. I, I, I'm with you on that. Teza, I haven't seen in a long time, so I, I need to rewatch that, but. Um, but because of all this great theory, I then get really curious at when the theory is not put in practice. And this to me kind of, but I think this is directly attached to the conversation we've just been having about American fiction and mm-hmm. this Where I way didn't put my theory into practice. <laughs> but I, but, <laughs> to be but, fair. I, but like, to be fair, yeah. you're having a reaction to a film. I know. I'm, they they're having a, a a social relationship with yeah. people who are helping push the agenda that you're you say you're directly opposed to, and I just want to have that conversation. I mean, it's a similar conversation that I want to have with Boots if I ever was able to like speak speak to him. Mm. I have a lot of these questions, and I but I but there's a way that they don't want to have these questions. People don't want to have this conversation publicly. Right. And it it kind of speaks to my own life as as a filmmaker and as an actor that the law, the more I've gone left and publicly radical, the more people have distanced themselves from me and having these conversations. They don't and they don't want to have them in public. Look, Mm -hmm. I get private. I get private chats from people who are well known all the time, but they'll never say this shit in public. And then I find it very weird because I find like I'm like the person that they go out and have like their radical moment with in a mm-hmm. private chat. <laughs> I mm-hmm. know you you're nodding because I'm sure it happens to you. I as get well. a version of that too. Yeah, you and know? they they where we become their space for catharsis, right? And, right, and and justification and and. But and that's why I keep saying the public performance is always always is gonna. Uh, uh, have more of an impact than whatever people do privately. That's why when people say, but you can't judge people because you don't know what they're doing off the record. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. There's nothing they could be doing off the record that's going to counterbalance the public connection and yeah. and, and uh, symbolic even uh, co-signing of, of, as you said, what they're supposed to be working against. It just doesn't, I don't, it just doesn't work that way. Yeah. But uh, uh, so, yeah, I get it. I mean, and I, and on some level, I, so that's why I mean, part of it is, I guess, you know, like it, it is. It's it's also a way to get your you you know to put your defenses up or to, to lower your defenses to say, uh, so so well, this is the most we could expect. They're doing the best they can. They got to eat too. They're constrained by they're struck da 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 da. And it's like no 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 no. The product is still yeah. And when you're trying a to mess. Pos- and you're trying to position yourself as someone who's a, a a movement builder, a part of a movement. That stuff, it doesn't work. I'm sorry, like it, it's not. It just doesn't work. Public being public is part of being in a movement. I'm I'm sorry. I don't I don't. You know, like this kind of like ninja attitude that the you know the the great the great work happens in the shadows. I. I don't buy it because, you know, because then every person that I found out who was a real shadow worker, they were doing shadowy work <laughs> also. Right. You know, like the, I remember there was people were trying to 
there was that documentary on, on Clarence Avon, the, the 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 Black Godfather, right? And I remember seeing that and going, oh, ew. So this is the dude who is pretty much, you know, making Black people socially mobile and being agreeable to the Black liberal, to the white liberal project. And he was pushing Black capitalism harder than anybody. And then identifying those within entertainment, you know, who he could pluck out. And all of them loved him. Love loved and him. and and to your point because i did it i talked about it here i hated that and then and then when when and and then but and as soon as he went it was almost if i'm i'd probably have this um incorrect in my memory but it seemed that it was almost back to back on screen where he's on the one hand saying black capitalism do for self and gotta be so and it's and then it's like as soon as he ran into problems the white man bought his house uh, and, it was, and, and and I was sitting there saying, and I'm like, this is my point. Like, everybody needs help. And you're over here talking about do for self. Who has a house buffer? I think it was like a quarter of a million dollars, some $300,000, right. whatever. I'm like, yeah. I think a lot of us would be, a lot of people's problems would, would be reduced if, yeah. if, if they had somebody who would just... So, but but that was the reward for the gatekeeping and for bringing black talent uh, to to white industry in a form that white industry wants black talent. So that's that to me. See, those things are much easier for me to suss out. Now, if they had told Claire Devon's story <laughs> in a Jeffrey Wright film, I might have fallen. I'd been like, I'd have been over here talking about that's a must see. Uh, but that's but thing. I do want to say this real Go quick, ahead. real quick before I forget. I, I made a note here. I just wanted to, to publicly, speaking of being public, I wanted to publicly thank you for for checking me and in particular your approach to just saying, yo, I heard you say this. I don't agree. Can we talk about it? Here's a couple articles I'm going to you know, maybe use to frame my argument, whatever. And mm -hmm. I appreciate that. That's all. I just was. Yeah. I'm just leave it there. I, I no, I'm that. and I'm with that because I, I. You're an educator, so you understand this. The 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 the, the thing that I've, I've I've had to come to, is that, um, we have all been trained, to look at and it, movies and media in particular ways, and it is a long process of of deconstructing how these things are divvied out to us and then deconstructing where our biases may lie our um hmm, message our um i won't say inabilities more like 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 um the word would be something like uh, you, you you lack muscle strength, you know, like, you know, I'm, I, I want to go lift. I want to go bench press, but I'm not there yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I lack the the kind of strength uh, or, or developed the muscle memory. Yeah. You know, develop yeah. muscle memory or de develop muscu musculature to 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 interact with certain kinds of pieces. But also like and I said this in our last talk and I say this all the time. The stuff that comes from our tradition are greatly, you know, kept from us. And that's what I always find curious with something like American fiction and a lot of stuff, because I'm like, what form are they copying? Mm -hmm. They're copying pro Hollywood form. And, you know, black cinema in this country has a long tradition of dismissing Hollywood form and creating our own, whether it's L.A. Rebellion people like Bill Gunn, uh, even Oscar Michaud back in the days with, with, with his, you know, gosh, I, I, I mean, dozens of films, the dozens of films he made of trying to create his own cinematic tradition or, or, or really a black cinematic tradition back then. And the fact that a lot of black Hollywood is just not interested in investing in it, or if they invest in it, it's it's superficial, or some like someone like Ava DuVernay, and I think she uses Holly Garima as cover, which is 
which I always tell people, I say she just uses him as cover um, to act like she's more radical than she actually is. Um, it's not a, it's not a, to me, it's not, it's, it's not, a, it's not a genuine acknowledgement because there's no way she could read what he writes, you know, um, and then say, oh yeah, my movies fit into this framework, but then also he doesn't hold her accountable. So it's a, it's a mutual agreement of sorts. Yeah. To like, to, to look the other way. <laughs> You know, it's very, it's, 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 it's real, it's real weird to me, but, but yeah, we, but there has to be now a project where we get people a hey, watching these films, reading the work, you know, uh, by our scholars developing new scholarship. I think there's a, been a little bit of a, of a pause in really strong black cinematic criticism. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that has to do with cinematic criticism in general. I'm not a cinema studies scholar, but I'm, I have a lot of people, colleagues that I work with, and they speak to a general change in cinema studies, how it's become more liberal, less, less critical from a um, structural and functional standpoint of how movies are made and more into kind of, I don't know, I guess content and, um, I don't know general emotions about it or whatever you know i i i, I we have should to... get some of your your cinema studies yeah. scholars crew and the next time to. in particular well, they're always welcome here but in particular the next time up in new york we'll, we'll get together and take a, a live to. segment i would love to do that hanging out i mean and chopping it up because i think that'd be fun too yeah yeah for sure because you know and and it's just it's just yeah, there's a lot of stuff that has to happen, a lot of deconstruction that needs to happen. And, you know, we we're all a part of it. And, you know, like like I said, I told I told this story all the time. I said, look, when I was it, a kid, I loved movies like Delta Force. I thought the movies were great. Right. I watched Delta Force. I was in my 20s and I had a little bit of political education. I was like, that is, this is the most racist thing I've ever seen in my life. You know, we were just yeah. raised watching these things and it's hard and, and the, the deconstruction has to be active, but also we need pieces. You, you can't just tell them all movies are bad. Right. Can't watch nothing. We have to also find a way to get them access to the work, you know, the Charles. Well, it's Burnett also that again, to, for me, it's always that we, we, I know that many in our spaces are going to watch these movies or a lot of these movies and not be encountered by, or not encounter uh, 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 the kind of discussions or criticisms that we, we have around here. So, yeah. Thanks to Mr. Faulty. Uh, bless you for this take. I was pissed because no theaters in Des Moines showed. Uh, American okay. fiction. Now I'll stream rent or buy to sleep with anger instead. Please, please, it's so it's right it's, on. And thanks for a, the super chat. It's a it's a it's a phenomenal work, man. I mean, and and Danny Glover mm. and that Danny Glover in that film is like woo woo. It's a it's a it's a, okay. it's a it's a great 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 film. Mary Alice, all of them. Shout out, you know, and a lot of the L.A. Rebellion work. I mean, and I mean, luckily some of the stuff is becoming you. The ability to find it is 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 happening. There's there's still um there's a lot still of difficulties. A gap, still a gap yeah. for seeing seeing a lot of finding a lot of stuff. It's still it's still a gap. Uh, quickly, thank you, Noah Shadoub uh, and Tume. I saw Black God, White Devil, oh, at the yeah. New York City Film Festival, and liked it, but could use your analysis. Oh, I don't know this one. That's the, thank you for the the super chat. The Global Rocha film. Remember the the, the brother. Oh, that's the, the right. Piece. That's yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, Black Guy, uh, you could email me at m 2 at iCloud.com. I can send you some great um Latin American scholar articles on it. Yeah, because it's not an easy film. It's a look, I've seen Black Guy White Devil maybe like eight, nine times, and around time five, I was like, oh, <laughs> I got it. Hey man, know? send the articles. Send send me the yeah. articles, and let's schedule another one because we yeah. haven't done Chameleon Street yet, no. and we haven't done, and you know, so we could add Black God, White, White Devil. Devil. 
Yeah. And let, Cause I'm always looking to get another excuse to get you back, man. Yeah, so, for sure. Let's do it. Uh, yeah. I'll send you, I'll send you, I'll send those both, both of y'all ways. And yeah, like email me there and to Megan at iCloud.com. And I can, I can send you about Jared. I'll definitely send you those, those pieces. There's some great, yeah. I mean, look, I will say like in general, in the hot and the heyday of cinema criticism in the sixties and the seventies and the early eighties, there are some essays that are just, like, I mean, I see. Yeah, I mean, you know, the it, ones you sent. Yeah, some of the names you mentioned earlier. Uh, shout out to my man Bashi Rose who put me on to Augusto Bowal some years ago. Like, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. like, like all of those. Like, there's a lot of great stuff. Uh, and there was a heyday so. of 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 radical criticism of art that went from probably from the 30s to probably like the early 80s. I think once the 80s hit, I think radical criticism of art hit a has hit a. A strange pause, which I I'd be very well, curious. Hours, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Beverly Hills Cop. I mean, Cop. everything was beautiful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Why why criticize black people are famous? Denzel Denzel is huge. He Denzel got an Oscar. was in Pelican Brief. What you complaining about? Exactly. The tear. What's the tear? What's the tear dropped in glory? Oh, glory. Yo. What's the tear dropped in glory? You know, everything yeah. was everything was cool. It was peace. Yo, you know the teardrop. But to me, that that's a highlight actually right there of like of melodrama getting people. Because look, I can't watch the teardrop and not get a little like, uh. oh but that no. movie. But that movie got so many problems. Do you know that movie? As the closest I've ever come to Hollywood, I don't know how this happened, and my memory's probably wrong. But there was a call for extras to be in that movie. Wow. And I submitted, I I signed, I put in my name in. And the response was, was that I was too light skinned. They wanted darker. And I was like, and I just, it, and I was even darker than I am now, but I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I wasn't mad at it, but that was like, that was the only, and I wonder how that ever came to be. Uh, and I don't even know how I would have even, but that was, but I always remember that when Glory is mentioned that, that oh, I, wow. I tried to, I tried to, I was trying to get, be in the background and, and you just see me in the back of that scene. Like. <laughs> give it, give it, give him the looks and the, and the, and, 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 and the union soldier care. Oh <laughs> man. If that would have went through, you could have used that forever, man. Oh, forever! <laughs> I would have been. It would have been not, at the top of my CV. It would have been like, like background actor. I was glory. an extra in glory <laughs> because my mother used to do. I, that's probably where I'm sure that's how. Because she used to do a lot of extra. She she used to do oh. theater in New York, and so she used to like. She knew. She knew. She she like all these folks. That's how she met Robeson back in the day. Cicely oh, wow. Tyson. She used wow. to. She used to come up like all that, like we used to when I would be watching something on TV, like all the people that would bubble up and get some role on TV. She'd be like, oh, yeah, we used to. She did. She did extra work when John Waters was doing films in, in Baltimore. Wow. There's, there's 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 movies like like you might see my mother's foot in the background somewhere, like stuff like that. Like, wow. so like so that's probably how it happened but i never really had like i never had a desire to act or to be have that career but i did i was like i'll try i'll put my name and they were like no he's too light he's too light skin we try to get a little more realistic a little more realism yeah uh yeah 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 day you you in the 54th <laughs> in the real civil war that's right not you for the real yeah, that's, that's right. real no that's been the real civil war i've been in the 54th i'd have been there I'd have been yeah. right there. No, no. Actually, whenever I, I always vision. I'm, I'm with, not in everywhere, but on, with Hassan Campbell on this one. There's, there's house set slaves and field slaves, and me. I'm a runaway. That's how I've always. Same. I'd have been like, I'd have, same. Well, I'm that, not doing this. Yeah, I'd have been I mean, the first one killed. Like, like they got him in in twelve days when they killed uh, my man from, from the wire, uh, Michael. Um, Remember, he gets killed right at the beginning of the movie because he oh. says, let's rebel. And they kill You're him right. immediately. I totally forgot about that part of that movie. I was like, that thats that probably would have been me before yeah. I realized what's happening. Like, we on a ship in chains? Hell no. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> Michael, Michael Kenneth Williams. Michael, Michael K. Williams. That's yeah. right. That's Michael yeah. K. Williams. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's... But it, it, 
th- those movies are oh, wow. are, Thank you, are, 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 are are wild to me, man. When I when I watch things like be like, but I I grew up on Glory. I remember Glory was like this, this yeah. powerful thing, yeah. and then you 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 come back to it, um, and you go, oh, this is very odd. There's some things to it. <laughs> But but the funny thing about it, I remember that was like that was my negative reaction to the um the Nat Turner movie oh, that uh, what's his name did was well one of my many Nate na- negative Nate Parker one of my many negative reactions to that movie. But he does pretty much the same thesis that mm-hmm. the 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 Nat Turner rebellion's um destiny was to become a Union soldier. I it, the way they the way they. Because the little boy that snitches leads the charge at the end of the film. I, I was so like, you got to be you kidding me. So they were like, violence is okay when you're shooting the people we tell you to shoot, but violence is not. And then I also noted that there were the 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 amount of violence meted out against white bodies in that movie is almost none. Right. It's like 90 minutes of black torture, lynchings, teeth busted out, rape, all this stuff. Yeah. And then it's like you're waiting for the rebellion. You keep thinking, I'm eating the popcorn. Like, okay, it's but we're about to minutes. get the payoff. It's 11 minutes. It's 11 minutes. You know, I, I said, I said, I said, I called it slave heart without the battle scenes. You know, I was waiting for like the uh, big <laughs> exactly. Heart. I was like, where are my Mel Gibson running out? You don't get no speech. I mean, you know, no, none of that. No slow no, motion. None of that. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, I, no, I they do the, They do the Alfred Hitchcock joint. They throw when they they throw the blood on the wall. I was like, yeah. it's not even. I was like, it's this is 1950s cinema. Dude, dude, when it comes Brave, to white victims, I was like, what are you doing? I mean, Braveheart had like heads getting chopped. Hey, I mean, everything. I I want it. But even in that movie, there's all kinds of yeah. graphic violence. And then when it comes to, you see him throw the little, they, they bust the door open, the white man tosses the 12 year old oh, girl man. he's, you know, she gets, and then the scene cuts and all you see, they throw blood. I'm like, okay, a head gonna roll at least. And they just throw the blood on the wall. I said, stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Yeah. I mean, Glory, <laughs> Glory had more. Glory had glory had more, and but that, but like you know, we keep going. To me, this is yeah. all a part yeah. of this this project, and all these. But and the funny thing is, before, well, people want to forget about yeah, it. Was <laughs> well, people want to forget bold. about the Birth of a Nation movies before the Nate Parker stuff, you know, came out about his personal life, which I'm not going to get into. Um, that movie was celebrated coming out of Sundance, right. Right, it was celebrated coming out of. Then people wanted they they distanced themselves from the movie after his personal life came out. No, but I went to a viewing Sunday. of it. They did a viewing of it at the some Smithsonian big event here in D.C. Mm-hmm. And I went to it and was the one in the room throwing salt. Everybody was in there. Oh, and they were like, "Oh, Jared, what did you think?" I was like, "Man, this is a mess." And I went through all the points we just left here, and everybody was like, "Oh, okay, next." And it was like you just feel, you know you in the room, everybody yeah. just kind of <laughs> <laughs> start dis- they like sliding away. The and audience whenever- starts moving. <laughs> next thing you know, you're the They're one like, person oh. left in the theater. Because <laughs> I was like, "This movie is a mess." What are you talking? But they were oh. I mean, it was love. Yeah. I mean, it, it was the big. I think it is still the biggest sale coming out of Sundance in history. Look, man, I gotta, I gotta He's run, man. I hate, I hate that I'm the one doing it. I, I, no, I want to be the good. one. I, I, yeah, but look, we got to do this again. Thank you for, for checking sure. me and and holding up the accurate analysis that I fell on. So I appreciate it. For and sure. uh, we got to set up the next one. I'll start working yeah. with you almost immediately to do that because this is for always sure, great, brother. man. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enjoy your so time peace, off, yeah. my man. Yeah, relatively speaking, I'll be back tomorrow with Ernie <laughs> to Liberation and back okay. on Saturday with Renee. But okay. more or less, still a break. But but man, look, man, thank you very much. Peace thank to you, you and everybody in the audience because I know you're willing to fight for it like Fred Hampton used to say. And we will catch you next time here at our Mix What I Like and throughout the BPM platform. Peace, everybody. Peace, peace. And what do you sacrifice? Calm. Kindness.
as kinship. Love. I've given up all chance of inner peace. I made my mind a sunless space. I share my dreams with ghosts. I wake up every day to an equation I wrote 15 years ago for which there's only one conclusion. I'm damned for what I do. My anger, my ego, my unwillingness to yield, my, my eagerness to fight. They set me on a path from which there's no escape. I yearn to be a savior against injustice without contemplating the cost. And by the time I look down, there's no longer any ground beneath my feet. What is my, what is my sacrifice? Condemned to use the tools of my enemy and defeat them. I burn my decency for someone else's future. I burn my life to make a sunrise that I know I'll never see. Now the ego that started this fight will never have a mirror or an audience or the light of gratitude. So what do I sacrifice? Everything, 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 everything. everything.